Hey everyone, Lance here. Welcome today to my review on the Sony MDR7506. These are highly regarded among audio professionals, and they're also hugely popular with the average consumer. And for good reason, considering they perform better than a lot of other headphones costing almost twice as much. However, there are some situations where these may not be the best choice, so I'll talk more about that as I get into the sound quality, comfort, and features of these headphones. Now remember to check below for any additional information, especially where you can get these at for the best price. So I'll start off by walking you through the features and giving you a closer look at these headphones. Now these only weigh eight ounces, so they're lighter than the average full-size over-ear headphone. They also fold up and a synthetic leather bag is included, which makes these great for portable use. The bag is a basic synthetic leather bag, nothing fancy, but it gets the job done. Now you also get a coiled cable, as you can see here, and this stretches out to about 10 feet. This cable is not detachable, so if you're not a fan of coiled cables, then that's something to consider. Uh, the cable terminates in a 3.5 millimeter connector, and it includes a 6.5 millimeter screw-on adapter. You adjust the headphones on the side here using a click adjustment, and these get plenty large, so they should accommodate anyone, no matter the shape or size of your head. One thing I'm not a fan of is the way this wire comes down and is exposed here along the outside of the headband. It's just something to be aware of and be careful of. I know people who use these headphones for years and years and years without any problems, and so it's just something you need to be aware of and careful of as you're using these. Uh, the headband is covered in a pleather and has a small amount of cushion uh, here on the inside. The ear pads are racetrack shaped and are just barely large enough for my ears. So if you have larger ears, you might find these hug the outside of your ears just a bit. The padding is comfortable, but not ultra comfortable, and it does get warm after wearing these for a while. The padding isn't as comfortable as some of the other comparable headphones in this price range, such as the Sennheiser HD 518 or the uh, Audio-Technica ATH M30X or M40X. Um, both of those have larger ear pads, um, which are more comfortable. There's also great movement though with the ear cups. Uh, you can move them a little bit uh, horizontally, just enough to help find that perfect fit. And certainly there's plenty of that up and down vertical uh, movement. Um, so again, makes these really easy to find a comfortable fit um, with these headphones. Now these Sonys have 40 millimeter drivers and are only 24 ohms, which makes them very easy to drive. And as a result, you get plenty of volume and they're ideal to use with portable devices like your phone or MP3 player. So next, regarding the comfort and fit of these headphones, they're not only durable, but quite comfortable as well. And they do a really nice job of accommodating uh, everyone, no matter the shape or size of your head. However, if your ears are larger than average, you might find they press against them just a little bit. These aren't quite as accommodating as say comparable headphones like the Sennheiser HD518, or the Audio-Technica M30X or M40X. Those definitely have more room inside the ear cups. But that being said, they still surround my ears just fine and feel quite comfortable. They do get a little bit warm. I wouldn't consider these cool wearing headphones by any stretch. Um, the longer you wear these, you notice that heat and warmth start to build up. The head clamping pressure is moderate. Certainly they're not as compressive as something like the Sennheiser HD 600 or 650, but they do a nice job of staying on your head without being too compressive. So I'm satisfied with their comfort, even for longer listening sessions. After a while, I do start to feel the plastic through the ear cup padding. It's not that it's uncomfortable, it's just something I start to become aware of, especially the longer I'm wearing these for. But overall, I consider these to be certainly comfortable headphones and also great headphones to wear even for long periods of time. Noise isolation is particularly good with these headphones. Even at a moderate volume, I found that this really does a great job of blocking out the surrounding noise around me. So I really have a hard time hearing what's going on besides whatever I'm listening to. Next, I wanna go ahead and give you a live sound leak test. And what I'll do is I'll actually have these paired with my MacBook Air as it'll allow these headphones to get pretty loud. Um, so I'll start it out at a volume that I consider uh, slightly above moderate. So um, comfortable enough for me to listen to, but still loud enough for me to really enjoy the music. So I, I personally don't like to listen to it much louder than this. So this will give you a good starting point. And then I'll take it up to full volume, um, which is way louder than I would uh, ever listen uh, to these at, but just to give you a comparison. So this is at a listening level I would enjoy listening these two at. And personally, I don't like to listen to it much louder than this. So this is 75% uh, of the way uh, for my MacBook Air volume. And this is 100% of the volume on my MacBook Air. So again, even at full volume, that is way louder than I could ever listen to these at. But just to give you an idea of how much sound leaks out at different volume levels and how it might affect others around you. 
Next, I want to talk about the sound quality, which is absolutely astounding considering uh, the price point of these headphones. As I said earlier, they sound better than other headphones, costing almost twice as much. The tonal balance is almost perfect with no flaws, and these sound the way headphones should. They're excellent reference headphones and allow you to hear a lot of the nuances in your music, um, again, that other competing headphones fail to do. Uh, the bass is smooth and captivating. It's detailed and tight. There's a nice punch to it. In my opinion, not many headphones in this price range are really able to deliver an accurate and non-overwhelming bass response the way these do. Now, they do lack a little weight down below 55 hertz, but below 80 hertz and above 14 kilohertz, human ears are less sensitive, which of course is why we love to boost those frequencies. But with a decent headphone amp, you'll be able to hear that nice tight bass even down to the lowest frequencies. Now, something to keep in mind is when you first get these, the bass can sound a bit boomy. This improves the longer you get them, so don't be discouraged if you find that to be the case at first. The mid-range is very clean, vocals are detailed, and just wonderful sounding. They're really pleasing to listen to because they're not congested or covered up by muddy bass. Uh, to get better sounding vocals than these headphones, you'll really need to spend at least $100 to $200 more. They're that good. And that's one reason these headphones work so well for singers or anyone who wants to be able to hear how they truly sound. The treble is also clean and not harsh whatsoever. Cymbal crashes sound impeccable. And I don't know of another headphone in this price range that does a better job. From a sensitivity standpoint, I found these headphones to be amazingly sensitive to the mids and highs. The benefit to this is that you'll hear all the detail in your music and or your recordings, which is why these headphones are highly prized among audio professionals because they're perfect for detecting any imperfections in your recording, which other headphones tend to hide. Now, something to keep in mind is that if you're listening to something with a lot of contamination in the recording, then these won't be as forgiving as other headphones. Realize that it's not the headphones that sound bad, but they're just more accurately portraying what you're listening to. Now, these headphones sound really great with any genre of music, particularly music with vocals or anything with heavy beats. Jazz and classical also sound wonderful on these, but the soundstage could be better, especially compared to more open headphones like the Sennheiser HD518. Now, comparing these to the Sony MDR-10R, the 10 r sound more muted and mellow uh, in an unexciting way, whereas the 7506 has more sparkle, energy, and detail to it. Definitely the better sounding headphone between the two. Then if you compare these to the Sony MDR-V6, they look almost identical. But the V6 has a more up and down frequency response compared to the 7506, which is much more smooth and even. So while the V6 has more bass, the highs and the low mids are less detailed and slightly veiled compared to the 7056. The sonic field also seems just a bit larger on these headphones as well. Also, I would say these have a likeness to the ATH-M50X. If you've had your heart set on those, but you just can't afford those yet, these would be an excellent consideration. Um, you're going to get a lot of that great detail, sound quality, energy, and speed, again, of the ATH-M50X, but at a much smaller price point. And of course, the comfort is going to be a little bit different as well. Not quite as comfortable. You don't have the full leather, leather padding. But obviously, these cost uh, much less. They're about half the cost. So these would be another great way to get that type of sound signature where you're getting um, something that's very faithful, very accurate and detailed, but again, at about half the cost. So overall, the sound quality is truly remarkable with these headphones. Their biggest asset, I think, is just being able to so faithfully and accurately reproduce music as it was recorded. Now, as great as these headphones are, there are some reasons you may want to consider something else. Of course, one of those reasons being the cable. As I mentioned earlier, the cable is not detachable. Also, these headphones aren't as mobile friendly for using with your phone compared to some of the other newer headphones out there right now. And then comparing these to some other headphones, if you like or need a little extra intensity in the higher frequencies, for example, hi-hats, snares, uh, some female vocals, then you might like the ATH M40X a little bit better. Compared to the Sony, the high end is just a little more intense, but that also contributes to the detail, energy, and speed of the M40X. The low end is also a bit more forward with the M40X. So if that's a sound signature you think you'd like a little bit better, or if you just need a pair of headphones to mix with, then the M40X would definitely be the ones to buy. Also, if sound leakage isn't an issue, then the Grado SR80E or the Sennheiser HD518 will give you similar detail and overall sound quality of the Sonys, but with a more open soundstage. 
which can make both of those headphones an excellent choice for gaming and movies, as well as listening to genres of music like jazz and classical music, which really benefit from that open soundstage and that great instrument separa separation. But while the Grados are airy, sparkly, and very refreshing sounding, they do lack low end bass compared to the Sonys. So if you enjoy that bump in your bass line, definitely stick with the Sonys. Now, if you're interested in more bass and less concerned about an even frequency response, then the Sony MDR V6 would be the way to go. Price wise, if the price of the Sonys is a bit out of your reach, but you still want something that can hold its own against these caliber of headphones, then go for the ATHM 30X. They have really nice ear pads, uh, which give your ears actually a little bit more room. And of course, they sound better than their little brother, the M20X, by being more refined. They have a, uh, a nice bass bump and higher detail. But compared to the Sony's, they have a tad too much high and treble in the realm of the uh, 3000 hertz mark. Um, so if you can spend the extra few bucks to get the Sony's, it's more than worth it. And the Sony's, I think, are the better value overall. But otherwise, if you're looking for the most faithful reproduction of sound you can get at this price point, whether for professional or personal use, then these are the perfect headphones. There's a reason the Sony has been a staple among audio professionals. They have an even response across the entire frequency range. They have better sonic depth and dexterity than many headphones costing twice their price. And they're also durable, comfortable, a true workhorse, and very reliable. Considering they cost less than $100, it makes these one of the best headphone values on the planet. So whether you're looking for a headphone for professional use, or if you're at that place where you're ready to be introduced to the world of high-end sound, I think you'll really love and enjoy these headphones. These are one of those headphones you'll find yourself using and enjoying time and time again. So hopefully this review was helpful for you. If so, leave a thumbs up. I always appreciate that. And again, check below in the description for any additional information about these headphones, especially where you can get them at for the best price. But otherwise, thanks for your time. I appreciate you guys watching and hopefully I'll see you in another video.